ladies and gentlemen, with back roads of Appalachia, Mr. Eric Hubbard. Eric, how's it going, buddy? Good, sir. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Man, I appreciate you uh, coming on and speaking with us. Like I was telling you right before we hopped on air, I think that what you do with Backroads of Appalachia is such a cool thing. Not just because the cars are cool and all that, but really the amount of, uh, of care that you put into what you do. Because I was reading on y'all's uh, website earlier about like how you don't just find like just any random cool road but roads that actually go through, uh, I think the term you use, like distressed towns, former coal towns, that can mm-hmm. actually use the, no pun intended, traffic, and uh, also just the cool events that y'all do. Yeah, you know, the, the most important thing, me being an Eastern Kentuckian, uh, me being throughout this great country on a motorcycle, I see other regions and how they do it, but how can we bring it back here, mix it up a little bit, and that's what I call add that Appalachian ingenuity to it and make it work for us. And I think Backroads of Appalachia is doing a phenomenal job with that. And it's a lot more than just me. So it's, I can give myself all the credit on this. So who all do you got working with you? Man, I have uh, the most talented board ever out there. Uh, you know, begin with Backroads of Appalachia wasn't just thought up and formed. Here we are. Okay. Uh, the real reason, and I don't care to call it out, how this the kettle black, as we say. Um, I sat back for many years and watched other nonprofits come in their area, get this federal money, get this state money, and then take it and put it in their pockets and take it to their condo or their beach house or somewhere else, and the money didn't go to our people. Uh, so, you know, of course, me and my board, uh, we're a board of uh, four plus me as a director. We all have a motorsport background, either off-road, racing events, motorcycles, or rallies. And we bring what to the table, each strong point of each one of us to create an infrastructure that we can do again, again, again at multiple places throughout Eastern Kentucky. It really is a cool thing, man. So how did the uh, back roads of Appalachia begin? Me one day, I think I was in Idaho, started looking at this beautiful little town outside of Snake Canyon and seeing just the little trinkets and what they're doing, trying to attract tourism. And I was like, you know, our town's back home so much cooler than this. Why ain't we doing this? You know, and uh, that's kind of where the, the ideal sparked. Uh, my background, for me personally, uh, being from a boy from Yellow, Kentucky, I'm a son of a paralyzed coal miner. Um, my sister got to have the opportunity to go to college. When it's time for Eric to go to college, daddy didn't have the money. Uh, so Eric done the next best thing. He joined the Navy and saw the world, which opened my eyes, you know, to there's a big, big world out there. And yeah. what we do back home ain't always right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I got my tourism opportunities, though, through the Navy, through a USO program where I was starting to sweep the parking lots for tourism stuff for Virginia Beach. Um, I found that interesting. I started asking questions. Well, 10 years later, while I still worked for Virginia Beach Tourism while I was still in the Navy, um, you know, my heart was to become a tourism director. That's what I wanted to do because I love the idea of bringing people from outside the area into the area to spend money, how, you know, how to catch that money. Um, so until I came home and wanted to find a job, you know, I uh, started looking for jobs, tourism director, no disrespect to none of them. I appreciate all their hard efforts. So awful daggone hard to raise a family on that income. So hello railroad. I'm a blue collar. As you can see, just got off work, greasy, greasy hands. I'm a mechanic. Um, but I still always done tourism for my people through motorcycle events, bringing people into Eastern Kentucky throughout the year, showing what we got and, you know, picking a restaurant or a place to stay every time we came. We used to call it the hillbilly run and, uh, we had a good time. And that started, that again, the Idaho, Hillbilly Run stuff. I'm like, you know, we could do a nonprofit. It's just like God lined me up with the perfect group of people that I already made friends with. And uh, they all bring something special to the table that makes us truly unique compared to anything in the region, not just the region, but the East Coast, you know, and here we are. 
Man, it really is awesome. Like I was saying earlier, I looked into just all all the cool little details about what it is that y'all do. Like whenever it comes to your uh, welcome center, how it's staffed by people that are in uh, transformational programs, you know, and I just think that little details like that is what makes people looking into it realize just how much y'all care about not only just the beauty of the area, but the people in that area as well. I feel, you know, I truly feel that as a society of us as Eastern Kentuckians, because I can talk about it because I'm one of them, just like yourself. Um, we have failed the generation prior to me or before me or after me, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the opioids that came in after I left has really put a hurting on our people. Uh, giving people nothing to do with an opioid problem is a severe problem. You agree with that or not? Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, transition, some of my best friends I grew up with, they're dead now, overdosing, um, heart problems, whatever, from the drugs. Um, and also, you know, see this, the zombie fight in certain areas of people walking around like walking dead, that really bothers me. It's a cord, you know. Um, so our transition program is real simple. What's the best way for someone in transition to keep them on a straight and narrow? What, what do you think in your, your opinion? I think that it's giving them a good job. Well, just giving them any type of opportunity because so many people are just so quick to cast that judgment and look at these people mm -hmm. as Beneath them. a lost cause, mm -hmm. you know, and whenever you give them a little bit of opportunity and also just show them that, Hey, you're still important. You still have a purpose here on earth that can go miles for somebody Absolutely. who is in that mindset. And, you know, my big thing is a lot of these people that's in the transition stuff, they don't have a lot of self-confidence, and I'm not knocking it. You know, our job is to get build self-confidence in, in our people. Yeah. Um, how do you do that? You put them in front of a, t or of a camera or every day that you're going on Facebook Live promoting their area. Makes them prideful about their area, and it's also teaching them public speaking. Self-confidence builds respect agreed or am i wrong oh, yeah yeah totally agree you know so that's the one thing i'm proud of and i'm proud of our staff is i, I can say i would put them up against anybody right now you know in around transition or not and and let them go head to head with them because they'll outwork them they got that appalachian work ethic all of a sudden and uh i can just kick back and grin you know what i mean yeah exactly and and uh, there, there's perks working with us. I mean, where else in Eastern Kentucky you, you're going to be able to get a ride in Lamborghini, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, you know, sometimes we might have some famous people swing by just because they saw it. And, you know, it's just a cool thing for these people to be able to be part of, you know? And we don't treat them like staff. They're a team. That's the difference as well. I have a team of people that everybody is equally important as everybody else. We don't look down on someone because they're in transition, drug court, whatever, you know, working on their GED. We want them to get that GED. I want to find every way possible to help them get education where they can go on if they decide to leave backgrounds of Appalachia. They will be a contributing person to society. And uh, I think we're on the right kind of – work path, I guess you could call it a blue collar work path uh, versus other work paths that's been placed out from other organizations in this area. Um, you know, be confident in yourself. You can do successful things. Yeah. They're you being, know, they're, well, they're being confident in themselves and also just being confident in the area too. That's uh, <laughs> something that I, I've, I, I under, I've thought of as a kid, I was like, man, I can't wait to leave here. I can't wait, yada, yada, yada. But as I've grew older and as I've seen more of the world, mm -hmm. I'm like, the, the beauty that we have right here in our backyard is unmatched. Absolutely. And that's what really does keep me around this area is whenever you wake up early and you go on top of an overlook or a big mountain and you just have a lake of clouds right there in front mm -hmm. of you. There's not many places on earth that you can get that type of experience. That's 
a mile down the road from your house if you're fortunate enough to live yeah. near a place like that. And look, I mean, you know, if you go back to Greek mythology, the gods, the only people else besides the Appalachian people was the gods in Greek mythology that could do this. Yeah. You can wake up and do it every day. Pretty yeah, it, cool. It, it's, I mean, we are so blessed to live in this area. And for people like y'all, too, creating tourism and bringing people from outside of the area in here to see how beautiful it is. And also just the roads, too. Like, whenever I was a kid, I remember – uh, traveling the back of the dragon going over to hungry mother's park over there in virginia and just thinking oh this was so cool like all the turns and stuff like that and, and i've learned quite a few roads just from y'all like i've drove the slingshot numerous times not knowing that it was called the slingshot you know and, and i can't wait to get a chance to uh travel the appalachian audubon and roads mm -hmm. like that what all roads do you have there with back roads of appalachia so as of right now uh, we of course have the dragon slayer highway 160 people say why did you name it the dragon slayer i hear it all the time you know that we're two hours and 17 minutes from the tail of the dragon yeah. also on the other direction we're two hours and 14 minutes from the back of the dragon them two compete against each other right yeah Let's put us in the middle and say we're the biggest badass of all of you all because we have the highest elevation in Kentucky. Coming to the coolest town that still, even though it's, you know, the, the, the good old days of it's gone, that them buildings aren't going nowhere because they were built out of that mountain. The, this, the, this, the look of that, the feel of Lynch, Kentucky, and Benham, Kentucky is phenomenal. Yeah. So you come down off this mountain and you're like, I survived, baby. I did it. You know, and then boom, <laughs> check out these buildings. You know, um, when they land there, you know, I'm all about Virginia and tourism. So please don't take this wrong, Virginia people. If anybody watches this, uh, its purpose is to bring up traffic off the of US 23 and give it one last opportunity to come to Eastern Kentucky. And uh, we're at 39,000, so I think it's doing pretty good in, in a year and two months. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, think of that 39,000 if they stop and buy a burger or get some gas in eastern Kentucky. What's that doing for our infrastructure? What's it doing for a state tax base and a county tax base? Uh, with my car guys, bikes like to do a route, A to B, right? That's what mm -hmm. they like to do. They want to stop and chat and shoot the bull. Car guys don't want to do that. They, they want to run an itinerary. They want to do this, that, and that, and that. Stop here. You got five minutes. Go here. Take a picture. You go, you know. Appalachian Autobahn, 107.3 miles. Uh, includes Little Shepherd's Trail in that. Um, the Black Diamond Targa, uh, it's uh, 92 miles. It's a car thing. The Cobra Ring. We're taking car-themed stuff from around the world, and we're throwing it right here in Appalachia. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we have – Simply the Brakes, which is St. Paul, Virginia. Again, off the highway, the major highway leaving out of our area, uh, bringing them over to Elkhorn City in Pike County, Kentucky. We have the Two-Headed Dragon over in Bell County. It takes traffic directly off of I-75 in Jellico, Tennessee, since they already left Kentucky, and gives them one more opportunity. I'm telling you about this road, come and ride it. Come over to Bell County for a while. Hang out with us. You know what I mean? Uh, and we also have Ride the River Dragon, which is from Buckhorn State Park to Beattyville, Kentucky, which I love Beattyville. I just love the feel. It reminds me of Mayberry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, um, trying to think. We have there's the Slingshot, which we already talked about. That's just a, another way. If I can get them to the Cumberland off the Dragon Slayer, I can then lead them to Whitesburg. From Whitesburg, I can lead them to Hazard, or I can lead them to Buckhorn, or I can lead them to Pikefield. You know what I mean? Yeah. Keep them, keeping them here for a longer extent of time is making them spend more money. Yeah, and, and I was going to bring up that point about how all of these roads that we're talking about leads to all of these different towns. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it's – some these little towns like, uh, you know, Whitesburg and a lot of others that we talked about, they're just – it's almost like a step back in time. Going to these big cities and seeing the skyscrapers is cool and all, but there's something about just seeing an old-fashioned small town that, I don't know, man, I just always like the vibe of it. Absolutely. And not just the vibe. Let's talk of the Great Smoky Mountains. Everybody has their opinion on the Great Smoky Mountains. Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, blah, blah, blah. They have a tourism-driven machine, right? 
Yeah. Do we want that in Eastern Kentucky? Personally, heck no. I want our mom and pops to survive and grow, not to change stuff to come in and take it over. Yeah. How do we do that? Influx of tourism. You know, these guys on these motorcycles and cars don't like traffic lights. They're here to explore our roads. And by the way, the Dragon Slayer, while we call it the Dragon Slayer, then the, either one of them, is our speed limits by the state of Kentucky and Virginia is 55 mile an hour. I dare someone, unless they're very talented in, or in a very super car or on a cross rocket, not a cruising bike, to try to do 55 mile an hour on that mountain. Yeah, it's, it's about impossible, man. You got to step on the brakes quite a few so, times. So that's why when I say Dragon Slayer, I'm saying we're better is because of our speed limit. But the most the coolest thing that's happened this year with us is that McCurry County and Whitley County, Kentucky, which is right off the I-75 before you go into Tennessee, has something that they work together on called um, Copperhead Trail Loop. It's 67 miles. It goes by Kingdom or by Cumberland Falls State Park and all that. And it goes through a lot of rural, more level grounded than mountains because of that side of the interstate. But uh, they contacted us and wanted us to take it over and run it for them. McCurry County is a special place to me because I'm a railroader and I go through there all the time. Yeah. It's the fifth poorest nation in the country, number one in the state of Kentucky. It's not McCurry County's fault. 82% of McCurry County is owned by the National Force. They, even though they're close to the interstate mm -hmm. and have that, they cannot be an industrial nothing because of the property. Yeah. Makes what sense. can they be? They can be an economic-driven tourism machine. They have that National Forest land that anyone, you, me, or anybody can go visit. You know? Yeah. This need to change the gears in a little bit and make it more of a motor-driven kind of concept. So, and that's what we're doing with it. Yeah, I would highly recommend anybody go check out y'all's website because y'all have the maps on there that shows you from A to B how to get on these trails. And also, yep. like, uh, I have a lot of family from Georgia. That's where I uh, spent a lot of my younger years. What part? And, the, and they would just – oh, a little place called Hawkinsville. I know where it's at. Buddy, you're one of the very few I've talked to that know where that's at. I always have to say, like, Macon, close to Macon. Macon. They're like, oh, okay, they, okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you're way down there. Yeah, right in the middle. But yep. uh, whenever family comes and visits and stuff, they'll ride US-23. And, and don't get me wrong, it's a beautiful highway. But they're like, oh, this looks like North Carolina and South Carolina and all mm -hmm. these other states that I've drove in. I'm like, no, you have to travel the back roads to see mm -hmm. the actual beauty of Appalachia. And that's go why to, whenever Go to Butcher get, Hollow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, but, it, but the people that will visit this area – may not know about these roads that we're talking about. So whenever people can go onto a website like y'all's and see a whole list of them, it, is, it makes it a lot easier to see the beauty of well, this area. You kind of tied in something I want to give props and brag to real quick. Is there a wonderful federal people of the USDA? We put a proposal together to the USDA to create a mobile app with turn-by-turn -turn navigation supporting all mom-and-pop places on our trail systems. Mm. and they grant us the money to get that done, and our goal is to have that done for spring of 2022. So we're not just going to be a map. We're going to be an app that's actually um, a higher-end app that will go lucratively attract these motorsport enthusiasts and families, which so we're going to take them off that main highway. We're going to bring them to them little towns, you know, and I, the, and, uh, I have the USDA to thank for that. They believe in what we're doing, and, uh, you know, that's a, that's a win for the underdog. That's a win for the little guy. But most importantly, that's a win for us as a small-town society. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, so I, I mean, well, that, and also, like, if you want – people talk about, like, good southern food, you know. That's – these little mom-and-pop restaurants and places like that, that's where you're going to find it. You ain't going to find it at no McDonald's or no KFC or nothing mm -hmm. like that. Yeah some of the best food in my life has came from these little hole in the wall establishments that, like I said, it's, and also another thing about on y'all's website is people can find lists of these restaurants that we're talking about. And we I, grow, I love just we how grow much weekly. time and effort y'all put into it. We grow it weekly. I have to give props to the website. When we first started Backroads, it was pretty much over a board's pocket. 
we didn't have no sponsors. I, you know, I'm a prideful guy. That's one thing that's the hardest thing for me, you know, running a nonprofit and all that is asking for money because I was raised not to. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Um, same way, brother. But, you know, um, Jeff Marietto, he's out of, he's in Best 606, which be another wonderful person for you to podcast sometime. Harvard graduate, mm. IT guru that lives down in, in Williamsburg, Kentucky, that's got businesses in Harlan, Williamsburg, Corbin, and he's doing all this unique, cool stuff, but he's also an IT guru. He's one that built our website because he believed in what we do. What did you say you know, was again? Jeff, Jeff Marietto. Oh, shout out to Jeff. I, I'll, I'll give you a contact information, but he has a program that not a lot of people know about called Invest 606. He goes out and gets money, and these startup businesses – Mm -hmm. They compete for up to $15,000 cash and a bit of zero percent or low interest rate business loan to build their base and infrastructure to, to make it keep local in Eastern Kentucky. Uh, it's a wonderful deal. And mm, it, cool, it, check it out, write it down right now. So you don't forget and all the listeners and best 606, yeah. check them out. You have an ideal. I highly suggest uh, looking into that for next year's deal because uh, you have to do some, you got to do some leg, leg work. But uh, Jeff, of course, is that Harvard business grad. He's very sly and he understands the laws and regulations. And he's just that guy that you can depend on because he's pro Kentucky. He's actually named his two children, Harlan and Perry, Perry hey, County, Harlan nice. County. Nice. So, and he don't talk like me, you know what I mean? Uh, and he's probably a lot smarter than I am. You know what I mean? But uh, he's a true champion of Eastern Kentucky. No one really knows about. I, I, I just love that people are taking back pride into this area. Because, I mean, whenever all the coal business was shutting down and stuff and everybody was having to leave, it was just a very depressing time. Absolutely. Area. And, we, and we were all wondering, you know, what's next? What can we do? And to see – people like y'all and other organizations like the Jeff that you just mentioned there bringing tourism into this area. I think it really is something that can help mm -hmm. save our area's economy. Yeah. You know, and the, you know, people ask me, well, why are you bringing these Lamborghinis and stuff in? I guess asked all the time. They have an expensive lifestyle with expensive taste. How do they get that? You think they work yeah. business owners, stuff like that. Right. So, perfect example, two of the Lamborghinis that came, the first rally, they came back through midweek last week. They didn't come just to drive our roads. Um, I set them up with opportunities to meet large nonprofits that's very pro-champion, what I call champions, and discuss opportunities if they want to bring 250 to 500 jobs to Eastern Kentucky because in Florida, where they're based out of, they have a supply problem. People making X amount of dollars – in Florida, it's good money for here, but it's not good money for living in Orlando, Florida, cost of living. Yeah. And they have a problem. The people want to make that kind of money. Uh, they don't speak fluent English. You know what I mean? Yeah. What if from a rally for guys coming and driving our roads that when we start talking about everyday living, talking about their business, you know, a guy like me, can sit down and say, let me tell you about this. Let me tell you about SOAR and what they've done with broadband internet, making Eastern Kentucky the fastest broadband internet in the United States, which is, by the way, true. Yep. No one really knows that. You know no, what I mean? Nobody talks about it. That's awesome. Uh, are we ever going to be in Eastern Kentucky this far away from the interstate? My personal opinion, I'm not speaking for the counties and all that. Are we really going to be an industrial society? We have the people. We have the coal miners that can do it, but – Two and a half, three hours from the interstate, let's just be realistic here. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, I it's, it's all about driving cost, right? So, but what if we could bring businesses in, telework, so we can, you know, people are trained and retrained to work from home, enjoy their life, do their job in their pajamas and make a good living. And uh, still the census is growing, our base is growing, and people are not leaving Eastern Kentucky no more. I mean, the, it's all blueprinted and modeled already. My job is what I do with, with Backrose. This example is the rally guys bringing the business owners into the region, showing them how they could benefit 
and how they have we you have a supply problem we have a demand problem let's put it together let's make you more revenue which is what a business owner is all about you know yeah. and let's help our people well, so what what one thing that I thought was really cool about the uh, rally that I went to over the weekend was the the young kids man oh man I, Oh, like their face is just lit up because these kids might may live up the head of a holler, you know, and never mm -hmm. and probably just drove these cars on Grand Theft Auto or something. And thought that was the only <laughs> time that they'll ever get to see these cars. And I mean, just to see the looks on their faces, man, like it it, it made me tear up a little bit. Yeah. Well, and you know, we would have had a Lamborghini there, but it decided to kiss the guardrail, and it was uh, on a tow truck. Um, it hey, still, still cool rides though still cool but you know the Lambo didn't make it to that Saturday night or Friday night in Whitesburg because Friday that it, it decided it was the love of a guardrail no big deal by itself hit a little gravel it uh, happens. Lamborghini's purpose in life is to try to kill you I mean if you talk to any Lambo owner that's their job in life <laughs> your job's not to let it do it you know what I mean yeah um and we also had a Porsche that had some mechanical problems, so it didn't get to make it either. But we still had a bunch of cars. Uh, we did have a GT3 there. I don't know if you saw that or not. The blue yeah, one. I saw the GT. Yeah, yeah. that was awesome. Uh, people don't have a clue about that car, but that's probably one of the baddest cars on the planet. Uh, you know, price base, 230000 You know what I mean? Man, the I, I, God, I'd the wrap Austin it around Martin. a tree, man. I'd be terrified to drive something like that. But it, yeah. it's cool to just see it in action. But and a, you, a driver much better than myself driving. Oh, but the Austin Martin, you saw that, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's what everybody's talking about. Yeah. Oh, great. Gray Bishop, man. Let me tell you about a, a true, genuine good guy from Georgia, by the way, just for oh. you. Um, you know, the man don't have to do what he does. But that man, if you watch every kid that comes to him, he puts them in the car and lets them push the buttons, explains the car to them talks to them about if they try hard in life that, and they succeed and they do good in business and make good decisions and listen to your parents, that you too one day might have something like this. Mm -hmm. And then he goes into the break of the car. The car did 257 mile an hour at Bonneville Salt Flats. It's one of the baddest cars in the United States. And guess where it was at Saturday, Saturday night? Pikeville, Kentucky. By God. And what was the guy doing? He wasn't sitting around saying, don't look at my car. Don't touch my car. Please come sit in. Let, let your mom and dad take a picture of this car. Let me talk yeah. to you. I just think, you know, you can't buy that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, that's one thing I was going to bring up, man. Imagine just the inspiration alone that y'all are giving these young kids out here. And, and also, I mean, the – I have buddies that are mechanics and uh, unfortunately they've had to move to bigger cities and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But the jobs and mechanics, these young kids out here listening to this podcast, you can make some dang good money well, in, that, in working with these cars. The reason why I was late today, I was talking to uh, Gray, the Austin Martin guy. Of course, Gray is very, very well known in Georgia. Uh, Gray does so much for communities and this, what he, like I said, he's a, he's a superior human being in helping yeah. from back to blue to whatever else he does. But part of the conversation today was we need to up our trade schools because he sees what's coming with, with these exotic cars coming to Eastern Kentucky. We need to have people up and trade and trade school ready that can work on this Ferrari or work on this Lamborghini that's based in here because right now they got to go to Louisville or Asheville or Atlanta or yeah. Nashville. Or maybe Knoxville has a Eurotech. You know what I mean? Yeah. But how cool would it be for someone to set up an exotic car garage just because of the influx of these cars all the time coming and have the ability and capability to work on? The young kids around here could grow up and that be one of their actual goals instead of hoping for the coal mines to come back or mm -hmm. looking at going to a factory in Georgetown or something like that. That can be a real goal for them in life. And, I mean, it's – that, that'd be much better than building them in a factory, in my own personal opinion. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I respect, and that's where I'm different than most faces of things. Um, I've been there and done that. I don't, I'm no, I'm who I am. Uh, I'm not the best political person you'll ever meet, you know, which a lot of people in my role is. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But, um, and there's nothing wrong with them, and I get along with them just fine. Uh, I'm a biker. 
I call it how I see it. Pro American, love my country, love Jesus, yeah. love my people. You know what I mean? Good man. And I don't mess with my kids or don't mess with any kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like you said, though, to see these kids and their excitement, you know, they're, that's something I'm never going to forget. You know, um, you think about that. Pikeville, Kentucky had almost five and a half million dollars of cars sitting there at night. I'm not talking about the locals. I'm just talking about them and came uh, four, 39 of them. Yeah. That's huge. And, and, and for the people that don't understand, like, how much money this brings into the area, how much money did y'all bring in over the weekend? Guestimate is roughly right around the sixty-two thousand dollar range, fifty-eight to sixty-two thousand over the course um, of the weekend. A weekend, that's crazy. Yeah, and you know the, the lodging wasn't just one county; it was spread out through a couple of different counties uh, throughout the day. They went ate breakfast here in this city or this town. Uh, they went to lunch and drove here and had lunch here. Then they came back and had dinner here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Think about the vendors at night. You know, we put this literally together. Uh, I'm not going to get in the things, but uh, we kind of got asked after kind of was in talks and it was going to happen and it got closed down. And what you do on a Monday of last week? Yeah. I called Tony Tackett, Pike County Tourism. And like, Tony, I need your help. And Tony is pro Kentucky. If anybody don't know Tony Tackett, please look him up. Good guy. I call, right him the God, I call him the godfather of tourism. Uh, he knows he's a, been a mentor for me because he knows how to do presentation and do the work. You know what I mean? Yeah. But in a matter from Tuesday, well, it's actually it was Wednesday when we got to go ahead and use the high school to Saturday. We put this together. Tony went and done his local stuff to, to get exposed to the local population which the local turnout and the cars alone, I thought was huge. You know, I was worried about, it. you know what I mean? We went from Weisberg where Weisberg, Hey, we shut this down, baby. We're going to let do burnouts. And of course everybody comes out and see Hellcats do burnouts. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. Police cars in the city of Weisberg, the mayor's like, why don't you go out there and do a burnout? Take the kids on a run, you know, and do a little drift around and let all the parents was cool with it. And that's like, that's where I'm from. I'm, I'm from here. You know what yeah. I mean? And then uh, turn over to Pikeville, though, it's kind of Pike County. It's kind of a different field than Letcher County. Just like Floyd County is different from Pike County. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, they all got the thing. That's right. But, uh, you know, to see that turnout, since you was there, what do you think? A thousand people? At least. I, well, I was going to say even over a thousand. Yeah. It, to, to me, because I was up there for quite a while. And, yeah, yeah. man, I, I counted quite a few. So, you know, through together in three days, thousand people had a good time and the most important thing is we had three vendors that stayed constantly busy three local food truck vendor a food truck person and two dessert places that yeah. made money probably think about that too probably yeah most events like that don't make they don't make much money do you think if i call them next time hey we're coming back and you might have heard <laughs> this today October 1st, 2nd, 3rd, not saying that that's the case, quote, unquote, just throwing it out there to you and your listeners. Get ready, it's coming again. You know what I mean? Um, you don't think them food – I'm not going to call them because they believed enough to come. I ain't going to give them the first shot and have them do the opportunity again. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just how I believe. Take care of it, takes care of you. Yeah, and I think that everybody would be all for it because that's all that I've seen on y'all's posts is people saying we can't wait for you to come mm -hmm. back again. But I did have one question, though, man, uh -oh. because I, I'm just weird like this, and I wonder. We forgot stuff. one thing before you asked that question. Uh, Max Center uh, in Prestonsburg uh, allowed on Sunday, even though it wasn't a huge turnout because a lot of guys went home. But there were still a lot of people that showed up, and they gave them a show at the Max Center. Yeah, so, I, I didn't get a chance to see that, but I seen y'all were doing that. But, you know, so right there it shows three different counties that embraced this, that made a positive thing for the local population to do. But the most important thing is, is the county made a little bit more money that day for tax revenue because everybody came to see They had to go out and eat, get gas or something. Yeah, You know, it's exciting. So, but anyway, go for your question. Well, I was seeing like all the, the burnouts y'all were doing and everything like that. What do you do when garages are closed on the weekend, man? How do y'all get new tires and car parts and stuff like that? How does that work? Because I was like talking to my wife. I'm like, 
I know they're going through probably dozens of tires this weekend. Where are they them, getting them all? Them guys brought tires with them, and like Grave, the Austin Martin actually shipped tires in just wow. in case. Because we don't want the business owner to just, hey, we might go through eight sets of 20 inch tires for a Hellcat. So these guys bring their own tires with them. We coordinate with local garages. Uh, we used to stay open late. Raise your truck. These boys don't care to pay. Change their tires for them. If they need them for some fix, work on it for them. Uh, perfect example over in Coma, Kentucky, uh, Brad Cornett, Cornett's Garage. Friday morning, changing brakes. Saturday morning early, changing tires because of where they burn out Friday night. Yeah. And he made a little bit of money off of it. But the most important thing is, is he stepped up for his community and got up early for them guys just because, because he wants to see that grow because down the road, it's going to pay back him because again, we remember who helps us. You know what I mean? But, um, mobile tire care uh, changer, something I'm looking for. If anybody in the entrepreneur world out there, just think if you follow these guys at each event, because they're, they can burn up to three sets of tires in an event. That's no problem to them. Uh, let's say you're sitting there and you're charging 25 bucks a tire. They bring it over, you jack it up, and you change the tires out on the rims real quick and go. Um, it's a good opportunity for someone out there. Yeah. Do they have a, something like that? Yeah, you, know, you can buy a mobile one. You decide to need a generator, and it's just you know, you're not going to balance them. You just throw some balls in there and just change yeah. the tire. You can break it down the old-fashioned way, but I would buy the machine. But, yeah, the you can get a mobile tire changer. Um, I, and somebody out there when you're listening here, you might have one. Just, just contact me, 423-293-1712. I'll hook you up. Hey, there you, know? you go. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, this show has started businesses before, though, and I, that would be a good little side hustle for somebody that could probably wow. even turn into a full-time business. I mean, well, that's yeah. a lot of money when it comes to these cars. Yeah, and – uh you know, and we also had some that, if you looked in the back of their cars, they had rims and tires already mounted. They put their seats down and was carrying a rim and tire. And they had their super stickies for going around the curvy roads, and they brought their harder harder compound tires to change out right there and do the burnouts and swap them back. You know, um, you know, and, and let's talk about Eastern Kentucky. One thing that I like, I, I'm – at first, I didn't know how to act, not because I'm judgmental or, or whatever. Uh, we did have a person that decided of changing of, of genders. I don't care how people believe about that. But, um, you know, a few months ago, she started coming around. And at first, I didn't know how to act. I ain't never been around that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's still new to this area. Yeah, so I was respectful and all that. But once I got to know her, um, you know, we got talking. And she can outdrive about outdrive about anyone. Um, <laughs> but to see these kids come up to her and her transformation again, I'm not getting into that. That's that's this is non debatable. It's just I respect what anyone wishes to do if they do it in a what a correct way and a way that does not change my beliefs or way of thinking. I guess is a, is how I look at that. Yeah. But there was children coming up to her asking for autographs and thought that her car, which was the cheapest car there, but how she drove it and how it looked, they wanted to sit in it and have her autograph. How do you uh, think that that made her feel? You know uh, what I mean? On, on top of the world. Rock star. Because, you know, even where she, I think she lives around the Louisville area. I'm sure she's judged pretty heavily when she goes out in public. Yeah. And probably He's, terrified to come to an area like this. Not really. She, she's been around a lot. Uh, she's probably Eastern Kentucky's biggest spender this year. She comes up almost every weekend to drive her car with just multiple car groups just because. Yeah. You know, but she, it's, it's a cool thing. That's what I love about this stuff. It brings someone that you think you would never even meet or talk to. Next thing you know, you see that person – actually being opened up to and, and getting autographs and making them feel like there's part of the part of the crew versus an outsider. Yeah. I love but, that. But, but it also uh, diminishes the stereotypes of our area too, because yes, that's sir. what I was saying earlier. At one time she might've been terrified to come to this mm -hmm. part of the country because thinking God knows what's going to happen and seeing that these people are some of the most kindest welcoming people 
on planet Earth. And, and I love to uh, get rid of the stereotypes like that. For our absolutely. Age. You know, I, anybody ever asked about, you know, I grew up, of course, going in the Navy. I was called a dumb hillbilly. You know, how to talk, look at your teeth. Uh, you didn't have fluoride in your water, boy. We can tell. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I had to prove myself daily because I had to work harder than everybody else because of the way how I sounded. You know what I mean? Uh, Appalachian ingenuity at its finest. But, uh, you know, I always tell people the stigma of us is their own fault. We allow it to happen. And I really think that stigma is going away. I really do. I do too. You know, again, hey, we're the, we got the fastest broadband internet in the United States, baby. You know, us, us Appalachians have to be doing something right. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Um, but I always tell people, look, you're going to fall in love with the roads. Our roads, compared to anywhere else in Kentucky, in the, in the country, you know, very competitive with West Virginia. That's the only one I could say is even competitive with. But our people's what wins it over. We have the most genuine, nicest, helping people. Uh, one guy in the old 56 Chevy. Did you see that beautiful car? Oh, yeah. Yeah. All Friday night. Ran out, ran out gas. Of course, he had to bleed it and then have gas. He had seven people that he didn't know. This is one thing he was talking about. This is a guy is a uh, – Multi, multi millionaire, by the way. You know what I mean? We'll would never know like about that. Him. I can believe it. But, you know, talking to him and looking at him, how he was dressed, I would have thought that. You know what I mean? Not yeah. unless I already knew. But him talking on a Facebook post about how genuine and nice their people are, that he had so many concerns and someone, everybody diving in, going and getting a jug of gas and bringing it to him just to help him and help prime his fuel system. You know, he was blown away by that. Guess what you just done? You created that man a second home. Yep. You know, by the kindness of a couple minutes of your life, second home. And that's why everybody's already calling in that rally groups. This is our second home. We feel at home here. Actually, we feel more comfortable here than we do in our town in New Jersey or in Florida. Yeah, I, well, I mean, it's almost like everybody knows everybody right away. Like, yeah. uh, whenever uh, I had some family uh, visit here from the upper part of the country, and I was just talking to random people in Walmart one day, and they're like, do you know them? I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. Like, why do you just talk to random strangers? I'm like, because they're nice. Mm -hmm. We have a good conversation. It's it's that Southern hospitality, buddy. You can't beat it. Well, well and that's what, you know, these guys, a lot of these guys were from the South that came. They said that they thought Southern hospitality was good where they from. They said that they have nothing on our people. You know, but I explained, look, we had to depend on each other through the winters and our, our, our forefathers, you know, and I got to give a shout out to our forefathers, you know, our Irish descent, the outlaws, the moonshine makers, them kind of guys that no one wanted. We were lower than the lowest of the, of the Irish society when it came to the United States, when they came over and became citizens and given land, uh, they end up in Eastern Kentucky for a reason, the South, or at Central Appalachia for a reason. But how do you think build our roads? Exactly. And, but and, we, all, we all had to stick together, you know, kind of yeah. back to what you're saying about our forefathers. I mean, we it, it was all about family yeah. and hospitality to one another. We didn't, we couldn't just go by people on the side of the road and not talk to them. Mm -hmm. That that was a part of everyday life. You had to rely on one another, or if not you weren't going to make it. Our forefathers, they had to live through some of the roughest times. We have no clue. We, we have no clue. No, I mean, like, we think we have it rough nowadays. Like, yeah. They, yeah. They, there's a iPhones, reason that they were eating I, squirrel brains and yeah. turtle and all that stuff yeah. back in the day because that's all they yeah. had. But they also so, had each other. I get so sick and tired of people telling me how rough they got it with their iPhone 12. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you got the, you got the, oh, my, my internet's out for a few yeah, hours. You, you oh, got no. the power, you got the power of the world in your fingertips where you can learn how to build a, a rocket ship, but you're worried about chasing a cat or TikTok. Yeah. Watching some other person be, do something. And, and so you can imitate that, you know, there's no excuses anymore in our world where you no. cannot be the best superior person you can be because everything's right at your fingertips. And, and, and I would challenge the younger generation growing up 
to <clears throat> either watch interviews from some of these old timers, or if Absolutely. you're fortunate enough to have some still in your life, talk with them because it, oh. it will make you realize how lucky you are to be alive at this time on earth. Absolutely. My, my dad, he, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, he was uh, born in the early 1950s and he would tell me stories about them building beds out of hay yep. because that was all they had. Yep. The old outhouse days, no air conditioner. You just open up every window in the house. Yeah, pop the piss in. Exactly. I mean, and that that was real life back then, and it just makes you so thankful to be alive at this moment in history. But you know what? They were thankful for everything they had. Yep. And, you and know, and I think that's. I'm just so thankful to still have that kindness around this area. Absolutely. Nowadays. And for the parents out there that if, you know, what we just talked about, it might have struck a chord in them. You know, hey, I would like to do something like that with my child to show something. You know, I know of two places right now on top of my head that you could go explore and see that still a way of life is Pine Mountain Settlement School and Hensley Settlement School hmm. in Eastern Kentucky. It's a good half a day trip. 800 acres of land at Pine Mountain Settlement School. All the buildings where the children in school built them buildings and they're still yeah. standing. You know, they still do all the old way crafts and stuff. You can look on their website and take your kids for that for a low or free event. You know, knowledge is power and right there it is, baby. You know what I mean? I, so. I, I've heard of uh, the Pine Mountain one. I've never got a chance to visit though. Where was the other one that you were talking about? Hensley Settlement. Hensley? Okay. It's uh, on 421, somewhere right there around 421, uh, around uh, Hyden and uh, the Harlan County and all that, Bell County, all that cluster up that way. Yeah, I've always so, wanted to go visit the one over there in uh, at Pine. I mean, it's – You can stay there. You, really you can, can stay there. A lot. And you can stay there for 40 bucks a night. No one knows that. I, well, I've heard that it was over there, but I didn't know you could stay there, too. They got cabins that they, they cut trees down. That actually, they didn't cut. They fell down on their property. They take the trees and they build cabins. You could stay in a four- to six-bedroom cabin like you're in Gatlinburg or up in the Red River Gorge. No one knows about it, which makes it so cool. You know, uh, they also, inside the Grand Lodge, uh, they got – you know, you got your bedroom and you share a community bathroom three. That's where I, I visit a lot and stay when we do events because it's 40 bucks a night. And how cool is it to stay in an old school like that and have that vibe and feel? Also for so, 40 bucks a night. 40 I mean, bucks. Try, try getting that same experience in Gatlinburg well, and for under 500. Of course, you know, Pine Mountain Summer School is on what we call the Appalachian Autobahn. So I went to Preston, uh, which is the director of it. We had a long conversation. I said, what do you do through the week? He said, we educate children. COVID has financially killed us because we weren't allowed to bring in school buses to children and teach them the old ways from around the East Coast. I was like, we do with them on a weekend. Well, we rent them out occasionally, right? I yeah. said, well, what if I could give you an influx of people that'd be more than willing to pay $40 a night to stay here? You know, and that rides a motorcycle or drives a car that just wants to get away because when you're there at night, 800 acres, all you hear is the crickets, man. You don't I, hear nothing else. I'd say all you see is stars, too. On a Yes. Night. So, Holly, take the wife, and if you got kids, take them over and spend the night one night. You won't regret it. Yeah, man, I, I've been told by everybody to check that out. And one day I'll get over there. I mean, that that just Pine Mountain, the whole that whole area over there, it's beautiful. Yep. But, Eric, man – Thank you for talking with me today, buddy. I, I've had a great time with this Appreciate podcast. Appreciate you. And I hope that uh, some people learned a little bit from this. And, and also, I think that uh, they can learn a lot just from visiting y'all's website and everything mm -hmm. else that y'all have going on. So for the people that want to learn more about these places that we were talking about and what you do with Backroads of Appalachia, how do they go about doing that? They can go to backroadsofappalachia.org. Um, they can get on our social media and contact us, or they can give me a phone call at 423-293-1712. Uh, before, I, before I get off here, uh, I would like to give a quick shout-out to some people, if yeah, that's man. okay. Yeah, man, go ahead. Number one, I'd like to give a shout-out to SOAR. Uh, I think what they do in the area, not just for tourism, but, you know, broadband and, you know, infrastructure, they do phenomenal work. And, you know, I'm, I'm honored to be able to be part of that with them on a small base. 
um, I, I give recognition to those that deserve it. You know what I mean? And if I don't give these people recognition, please don't get mad at me, okay? EK set, uh, for what they do with the on-the-job training programs and the teleworks programs and the transition programs they offer, making Eastern Kentucky a better place one person at a time is phenomenal. You know, uh, our county tourism is Harlan County, Floyd County, Pike County, Ledger County, Perry County, Lee County, Osley County, uh, McCurry, you know, Whitley, and all the other ones. Thank you for seeing that I'm not, we're not trying to take over your tourism. We're just trying to help you grow it. That means a lot. And our biggest shout outs, real quick. No one knows, but Back Rose of Appalachia uh, has corporate, international corporate sponsors. Uh, we don't ask for a lot of money. That's not what we're about. But Michelin Tire, we're sponsored by Michelin Tire. And Michelin, our, 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 year, our deal this year with Michelin Tire is every time we have a major event in the region, they donate a set of tires that we raffle off and give away. Cool, man. That brings people in. So that, that might bring someone in just for a chance to win a set of tires. That means they're going to eat a hamburger somewhere, you know? Exactly. Um, and also Hall Tech, which is down in the, that's based out of Lacey, Kentucky. They make racing computers for uh, drag cars, street cars, whatever. Uh, they, their partnership has been amazing with us, and they support anything we do at these rallies and hill climbs and stuff like that. And I appreciate that, you know? Uh, our – or how we how we survive? Everybody always asks that. It's real simple. Um, we're not funded by the state. We're not funded by the counties. Um, we fund ourselves through selling t-shirts. Um, our t-shirt sales, is graphics are done in Eastern Kentucky. They're printed in Eastern Kentucky. And you know, I'm not going to China for nothing. If it can't be made in Eastern Kentucky, guess what? We don't need it. Yep. You know what I mean? Amen. But you can get on our online store if you decide to purchase a t-shirt. That money don't go into my pocket. I make zero dollars as director of Back Rose Appalachia. Uh, every dollar we get puts money in the bank for winter time for my staff to create more events and work on more events for 2022. You know, um, this time of year, tourism's good. We're selling t-shirts winter time. We are, we're not multimillionaires. We're get, get buyers. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, if anybody decides to purchase a T-shirt, that money goes to payroll for wintertime, and you're helping us to keep somebody employed. And I, I appreciate that. So I just want to throw that in there. Eric, thanks again, buddy.